Dirtle Magic. Thank you for tuning in to Dirtle Magic. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like the content you see here today, and leave a like and share the video with someone you might think is interested. Leaving those likes really helps us out, but another way to help us out is by using our TCG Player affiliate link below. If you're looking for singles, sealed product, or gaming accessories, please consider using our link to support the channel. We also have some playmats at inkgaming.com. Go ahead and hit the link in the description to check those out. Alright, let's grab some spells and dirtle with some magic. Hello and welcome back to Daryl Magic. Today we're playing some more Omnath Locus of Creation. Looking at our opening hands, or our opening hand rather, we do have technically all four colors, and we have two ways to drop some extra lands, get a little bit of card draw, plus our commander. So I say we keep it. Nice easy start to the deck. Our commander is Omnath, a non-black commander, and in case you don't know, red, green, white, blue for legendary 4-4 elemental. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, and then you have three landfall triggers if they all resolve. The first one is for life, the second one is red, green, white, blue to your map pool, and the fourth one is four damage to your opponents and planeswalkers they control. I really like that last one. Gotta uh, slap Teferi around with some elemental magic. Scalding Tarn into play for our first opponent, which means we're going last. Sad face. They happen to be Arcades the Strategist. Good little aggro deck over there, kind of eggs in basket, but I have seen some uh, pull out some interesting tricks before. So Arcades is one green, white, blue for Legendary 3-5 Elder Dragon. Flying Vigilance, whenever a creature with Defender enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. Each creature you control with Defender assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its uh, power, sorry, and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So yeah, uh, Wall of Denial hurts really bad. It's a uh, slappy for eight, <laughs> Flying and Shroud. Enclave Cryptologist down for the next opponent who is Kumena, Tyrant of Arazka. One green blue for legendary 2 4 Merfolk Shaman. Tap another untapped Merfolk you control. This creature can't be blocked this turn. Tap three untapped Merfolk you control. Draw a card. Tap five of those Merfolk you control. But one will count on each Merfolk you control. So, two aggroly Bant and uh, Simic decks at the table. Uh, okay. Maybe this last opponent will be mono green or mono blue. Alright, so there's an island into play for our opponent who is Xur the Enchanter. So, this can be. Competitive-ish, it can be Tron, it can be pretty casual. So, we'll have to wait and see. It's coming to our turn, we will cover Xur in a minute. We get a land for the draw. Go ahead, play the Evolving Wilds, crack it, go get an island. Everybody's playing some blue, da ba dee ba da -da. Basic island into play, pass it off to our opponents. So, Xur is one white, blue, black for a legendary 1-4 human wizard. And that's a wizard, by the way, in case you're building a party. Flying. Whenever Xur the Enchanter attacks, you may search your library for an enchantment card with converted mana cost 3 or less and put it onto the battlefield if you do shuffle your library. Scalding Tarn at the end of our turn getting cracked. So for Xur, uh, yeah, it's always been a pretty good commander. I don't know, I just, I had the bad experiences back in the day with it, so it's not a favorite of mine. Hollowed Fountain into play tapped for Arcades. To Arcades' turn. So let's see if they drop, probably like, I don't know, Wall of Omens, Wall of Blossoms. It's probably something like that. Savannah into play for them. Arcane Signet. Yep, got that guess wrong. Another Snow-Covered Island into play for the Command Player. And Soul Ring coming down. We have a level up on the Cryptologist. So level up, in case you're unfamiliar, I think it was uh, Zendikar 1, basically it was Rise of the Eldrazi. Uh, so you pay a cost at sorcery speed, and they gain levels. Per level, you get extra abilities or stats or something. They will tap the mirror poke to draw a card, and then discard a card. Over to Xur. Let's see if they also provide some ramp for themselves. Esper Panorama. Not ramp, but it is color fixing. They crack the Esper Panorama. Let's see what they get with it. I imagine a Swamp or a Plains. Swamp into play tapped for the Zer player. Looks like it's going to be coming back over to us. Let's see if we draw something besides a land. We get Sulphur Falls for the turn. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and play it, and then we'll pass it back off to our opponents. Uh, well, we're not going to run out of lands. We might run out of a hand, though. Flooded Strand into play for the Arcadius player on their turn. Let's see if they wait to crack it like they did the Scalding Tarn. Vivian Champion of the Wilds. 
So it gives creature spells flash. Pretty good card. I do like most of the Vivians. Uh, only one of them I thought was a bit awkward, but they all tend to be powerful in some respect. It also has plus one. Until your next turn, up to one target creature gains vigilance and reaches on the turn. And they are activating that. I did not get to see if they targeted anything. It does say up to one. The other ability is minus two. Look at the top big card of your library. Exile one face down, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. For as long as it remains exiled, you may look at that card and you may cast it if it's a creature spell. The loyalty to start with is four. Over to Kumena, they immediately activate the Cryptologist. Going to draw and discard a card. Let's see what they've been discarding. A Chroma's Memorial. Okay. That's terrible. It looks like they might be looking for a green source of mana. Aquatex will to the graveyard on the discard. Alright, it doesn't look like they're going to need that anyway. Everybody has islands. Frantic search. Draw two cards, then discard two cards. Untap up to three lands. Okay. That'll be pretty good. So... Lots of uh, value shenanigans, as Simic likes to do. They discard Snow-Covered Island, and what is this? Waterfront Bouncer. That's an uh, interesting looking merfolk. Okay. Hey, they get a green source. Moss Wart Bridge into play. It will hide away. In case you're unfamiliar with hideaway, you look at the top four cards, exile one of them face down, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Then if you meet the condition on the hideaway source, they used to only be lands, but now there is a creature. Then you can cast that spell without paying its mana cost. For green specifically here, you may play it for a green tap this land without paying its mana cost if you control creatures power 10 or greater. You know, green stuff. Cryptologist getting the level up. So let's see what level they're at. They're going to be at level two. So at level three or up, you can just tap it to draw a card. There's no looting effect then. No discard. Over to Zura the Enchanter. I hope they have a land and don't get stuck. But let's see what happens. Come on, planes into play. Well, I generally want to win my magic games. I also want people to be able to play those magic games. That's why I draw the lines at cards like uh, Tefri, the third one that stops you from playing things. Inventor's fair into play. Hmm, didn't see that coming. Semblance Anvil. Okay, let's see what they imprint upon it. They imprint a marble diamond. All right, that's interesting. So spells that share a type with this card cost two less to cast, so their R effects will all be two or less to cast. And they cast Felwar Stone for free, so that will give them the white source they need. Coming over to our turn, we get Venza the Sojourner. That will be good later on. He is one of the six blink effects in the deck, and I do love me some blinks. Let's go ahead, play a forest. And let's go ahead and get down the Risen Reef. Then we can play uh, Wayward Sword Tooth next turn. Or conversely, we can play Omnath and get another trigger off the Risen Reef. That might be better. Another land. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and keep that on top for now, or put it into play, rather. I always forget which one this is. All right, let's pass it off to our opponents. Flood Strand being cracked at the end of our turn by the Arcades player. Breeding Pool into play tapped. Okay, they will be at possibly five mana this next turn. They could summon their commander, but they do have flash, so they don't actually have to play anything until we attack and they block and surprise wall. Could be a thing. Wall of Blossoms coming down for the Arcades player. They will draw a card. Snow-covered forest coming down. Uh, hmm. High alert. Okay, so this is one of the enchantments that deals the uh, defender damage, if you will. So it says one white blue. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, and creatures you control can attack as though they didn't have defender. There's also a green one, uh, some kind of assault. I can't remember quite what it is. This does have the add bonus of you being able to untap a creature. So creatures like Axeman Guardian that have a tap effect, if you can get that going, it essentially can create infinite mana. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. Over to Gamena's turn. You know, I honestly thought the decks I usually think of as aggro would be a little bit more aggro -y. Yeah, live and learn. Nice casual game, I suppose. Nature's lore coming out for the Kamena player. They will search the library for a forest card. Tropical Island into play for the Kamena player. Will they summon their commander? Nope. They're on level up. So now their Cryptologist can just tap, draw a card. There's the activation. Ancient Tomb into play for Kamena, followed by Cure's Faller. Yep, that mirror folk is good in just about everything in the colors. I got an Ancient Tomb as a box topper in my Zendikar Rising box opening. 
if you want to go check that out. Do a set booster, because I don't really draft much, unfortunately. But Ancient Tomb is a card I've always wanted. Vampiric Tutor out for the Xur player on their upkeep. So they will draw whatever they tutor for. Prototype Portal coming down after an Arch of Araska. Another imprint card. So this is definitely not the usual kind of Xur I play against. Let's see what they imprint upon it. They imprint Wayfarer's Bobble. Okay, that's interesting. They will make a Wayfarer's Bobble token. So uh, they'll be able to ramp a lot. That'll be good for them. I wonder if it's maybe a Metalcraft deck or something like that. So I think what we have to ask ourselves is with all of these artifacts that are coming into play and all these artifact centric cards why is Zer here is sidri a secret commander or are they there just to get out one enchantment that will change the fate of the game comes to our turn we get the sylvan scrying card i mean okay that's pretty okay uh let's go ahead and summon our commander get that out of the way and then next turn we'll be able to do some interesting things Amon Amonath, Locust of the Creation, coming down. We get two triggers, so that's nice. Let's go ahead and put Amon Amonaths on the stack last. I want to see what Risen Reef does for us. So we either get two draws or we get a land and a draw. Mina and Den, that's fine. Now we get to draw our regular card. And we get Locust, <laughs> Amonath rather, Locust of the Royal. Uh, between the two, I don't know which one I like better so far. So far I'm leaning on the three color one. Let's go ahead and play a Mountain. We get a trigger, we'll gain four life. And we'll pass off to our opponents. We will have to discard a card. I think at this point we can risk discarding a planes or Sylvan Scrying. Although Sylvan Scrying can guess any land we need. Alright, I think we'll actually discard Sylvan Scrying. Because if we get down Wayward Swordtooth, we can play two lands next turn. Our hand will be smaller. Get down Omnath Locus of uh, the Royal later on. Should be good. Over to our Katie's turn. They have five mana available so far. Could drop another land. Planeswalker gives their creatures flash. Ooh, a vine trellis coming down. Okay, defender at tap to add green. Meek stone coming down for the Arcades player. That's a classic Arcades card. So in case you're unfamiliar with it, it costs one. It's an artifact. Creatures with power three or greater don't untap during their controller's untap step. Lightning greaves also coming down. That also means, one, their commander will never attack, but two, all of their walls will be totally able to attack and you have to keep up your defenses or blow up their field, or conversely get rid of the Meekstone. It's a good card in the deck though. Over to Command's turn, they immediately draw a card with the Cryptologist. Ghost Follower will tap to untap the Cryptologist, and I imagine they'll draw another card. Yep, there they go. Meryl Commerce, at the beginning of your end step, untap all Mirror Folk you control. Yeah, I think it's about time we try to run into some artifact or uh, enchantment removal. Kumina, Tyrant of Araska coming down for that player. Meryl Commerce will trigger. Over to Zer's turn. Inventor's Fair will trigger. They'll gain one life. So for Meryl Commerce, uh, that means Kumina can essentially draw about four cards every go around the table so far. That's going to get ridiculous. Prototype Portal being activated. They will make another bobble. Cryptologist being activated in response, Kumena will draw a card. Wayfarer's Bubble being sacrificed in response, Zer will go get a land. The other Wayfarer's Bubble also getting sacrificed, Zer will get yet another land. That's it for Zer. Rolling over to our turn, we get a mountain. Yep, lots of lands, but hey, at least we have landfall guys and they haven't, you know, gotten stolen or died yet. That's always a plus. Let's go ahead and play the Wayward Sword Tooth. Unless we want to play Mina and Den, that could be something. Now, let's play the Wayward Sword Tooth. Keep Mina and Den in reserve for the moment. Play a Mountain. Landfall Trigger will gain four life. Kumena responding by using Kior's Follower to untap one of their islands. I imagine that could be counter magic. Pondrify on the Wayward Sword Tooth. That's a sad face. We will get a Ape Token. Well, good thing we kept them in reserve. Alright, looks like we'll just use Omnath to attack the Kamena player and pass it off to our opponents. Revenge! Go! Alright, damage is good, they just take it. Let's pass it off to our opponents. Arcade's turn, Arcade's coming down for that player. Lightning Greaves being swapped to Arcade's. Angelic Wall coming down for the Arcade's player. They will draw a card. 
two combat. Let's see if our Katie swings the wall of blossoms anywhere. Wall of Blossoms on the attack, off into us. Yep, kind of figured that was happening. We'll just take it. Omnath is a very scary commander to a lot of people. But again, I actually prefer the three color one. I actually accidentally played a game with it before this one where I was able to burn out my opponents, draw a bunch of cards, and, you know, make my Ashling the Pilgrim huge to the point where I could do nine damage to everybody. Uh, this one does not have that repeatable land drop stuff unless you blink it. So. Teach their own, I guess. I think the three car one and the two car one are much scarier generally. Command's turn. Cryptologist being activated to draw yet another card. Cure follower untapping it, and they will tap to draw another card, I wager. Yep, there it is. Deep root waters. Whenever you cast a mirror folk spell, you get a mirror folk token. That's gonna get uh, out of hand pretty quick. Thrasios Triton Hero. Things just got to another level. Thrasios Triton Hero is being activated. So, yeah. Uh, don't not put tap, you know, symbols in those activation costs anymore, wizard. Thank you kindly. Command to the attack. Don't think they'll go anywhere. Maybe into Xur. But I don't think that's going to be viable for him. Nope. All their mirror folk will untap, and it will be Xur's turn. So at this rate, they could draw three cards. So that's not good. Mastermind's acquisition out of Xur choose one put a card you own from outside the game into your hand um all right so i imagine maybe one of the imprint cards i'm not entirely sure how that's going to work here edh doesn't have an outside the game prototype portal being activated so i don't know what mastermind's acquisition got backed i'll go check the logs in a second wait for his bauble looks like it's getting the crack yep there it is gonna go check the logs so the logs didn't tell me what they got back. I didn't think it would. Black tutors tend to do that. They don't let you know. It also didn't say if it succeeded. Command responds by drawing a card after all this is said and done over here on Xur's side. Kora's follower doing the dance with the cryptologist. Yet another card for Kumena. Simic doing Simic things. It's a playmat I made, by the way. Go ahead and check it out. Link in the description. Comes our turn. We get Spring Bloom Druid. That's pretty good. Should we play Mina and Den Wildborn, though? Seems like it could be pretty good. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and play a Mountain. First Landfall Trigger. Play a Plains. Second Landfall Trigger. And at this point, we could play either Omnath or Venzer. And I'm thinking Venzer only because then we get to draw two cards. So let's go ahead, hit a Plains up for mana cast Venza the Sojourner. It'll probably get removed. It won't even make it around the table, but it'll be good for us to at least blink our commander. And we'll activate the plus two on Venzer. Blink our commander. It will stay exiled until the end of turn. Uh, under my logo here, it says if you want to return to the command zone because it got exiled, for this effect, you need to say no. Otherwise, it will not come back. Let's go ahead and pass it off to our opponents. I will explain what Venzer does in case you're unfamiliar. He is a Planeswalker. Legendary, of course. Three white blue for a three loyalty planeswalker. Plus two exile target permanent you own. Return to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. Minus one creatures can't block this turn. And or sorry, can't be blocked this turn. And minus eight, you get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell, exile target permanent. Uh for the, if you see this in paper, it will not say legendary planeswalker on it. It has been errated since. So just a heads up there. Kimono responding, drawing a card. Alright, let's get Omnath back into play two triggers let's go ahead and put omnaths on the stack first or put it on the stack so it resolves first rather let's go ahead and draw a card Badoka gardener risen reef will trigger we have a land let's go ahead and put it onto the battlefield landfall trigger will gain four life and let's pass it off to our opponents now notice this is one of those uh double-faced lands or whatever if you put a land into play at least magic online doesn't let you choose which side it just says put it into play, so that'll be the front side. So just so you're aware of that, that seems to be something here. Over to Arcadie's turn. Let's see what they do with it. Hopefully not going to attack us, but we'll see. Sidor Kunda of Jamora. I said that wrong. But anyway, that is a really good card for them. It means the guys are essentially like quasi unblockable. Unfortunately, that also works out really well for the Mirror Folk. And the Mirror Folk and their Arcadie's deck are really jamming together, and I'm not enjoying that too much. 
Sylvan Karyatid coming down for the Arcanius player, they will draw a card. So Sudarakunda does have a partner mechanic with it, but since this is Arcades, it has no partner per se. So it has it's a 2-5 flanking. When a creature without flanking blocks this, it gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Creatures your opponents control without flying or reach can't block creatures power two or less. So all of their guys are essentially unblockable for us because none of our guys have flying and reach currently. That also means the mirror folk, again, are going to be mostly unblockable. That's going to suck really bad. Venzer getting immediately shot in the face by a couple of walls. Uh, he must be allergic. We cannot declare blockers, so he's going to go bye-bye. Yeah, generally when I cast Venzer, I expect to get one use out of him. So if I have a board where I need to hit somebody, you can immediately do the uh, minus one, and creatures can't be blocked. Get in there for some good damage. Otherwise, he's a five mana blink, which really sucks. But if he stays on the battlefield, that's when he can really shine. But most of the time, people aren't going to let that happen. Vivian Champion of the Wilds being activated. So that is the minus two ability, I believe. Yep, minus two. They look at the top three cards. They get exile one face down, put the rest on bomb. If it's a creature, they can cast it later. That's it for Arcadia's over to Kamena. Eight cards in hand for them, by the way. They draw every time we go around the table between, like, what, three and five cards now? So it's going to get out of hand real quick. I'm really hoping we draw into some mass removal. Uh, in testing, I didn't have that, so I did add a bunch. Winds of Abandon, Cyclonic Rift. We have Blasphemous Act. So we'll just have to wait and see. Cryptologist being activated again. Cure's follower, dancing time. Cryptologist doesn't want to dance, it's a wallflower. Muddle the mixture, transmute. So what this card says is one blue blue, discard this card, search your library for a card that costs two and reveal it to your opponents. So this could be a psych rift. Oops, that's not reveal. It is a psych rift and here comes the psych rift. Let's see. Yep, there's psych rift. Sad face, but we do get ETBs again, so that's not terrible. So yeah, Transmute, if you didn't see the Professor's video a couple months ago, it's a really good mechanic where you can basically have a tutor. It's just a certain CMC. Uh, House Demir of Ravnica 1 block had that as a mechanic. Commander player draws another card. To the end step, all the mirror folk will untap. They didn't attack anywhere, and that's fine. They're probably waiting for like a big beater or a lot of the 1-1 one -one counter shenanigans the green and blue mirror folk do. Hopefully this means they can become the arch enemy, and we won't have to worry about stuff so much. My Omnath deck has uh, three or four extra land drop things a turn. We do not run Oracle of Maldai. I did keep it casual. has a lot of basic lands. All that jazz. We'll discuss that at the end of the video. Over to Zer's turn. Let's see what they do. They had their imprint artifacts wiped off the board, so their stuff is just gone. So no more ramping for them. So I'm interested in seeing, because I still don't know what Zer is trying to do here. Hall of Heliod's Generosity into play. So they are running enchantments somewhere. Prototype portal coming back down. Let's see what they imprint this time. They imprint a Felwar Stone. That is something that did get bounced back to their hand. So they'll make another Felwar Stone, still trying to ramp. Into what, I wonder? Zer the Enchanter coming down for that player. So if they can attack, they will tutor out some enchantments. But what enchantments is what I want to know. I just don't know what they're doing with all these artifacts. Comes to our turn. We get Rolling Regrowth. We also have Spring Bloom Druid. I think at this point it'll be good to get another Forest into play. So let's go ahead and cast our Spring Bloom Druid so we can have a blocker. And go ahead and get another Forest into play. Because we do have a lot of green costs in the deck. Alright, let's go ahead and get a Forest. And a Plains into play. Play a Plains for my hand. Alright, and unfortunately we have no more green mat and everything costs green. So we'll have to pass it off to our opponents. Over to Arcadia's turn, only four lands in play. Uh, a lot of that other stuff coming from Manorox, I think they only had two though. Um, so yeah, rough shape for them. They did have a land come into play, Snow Covered Island. A thought Vessel coming down for them, so they get to keep the 13 cards in their hand currently. That's pretty good. Arcane Signet coming back down. Alright, Mana re-established. Sylvan Karyatid coming back down. Meek Stone, there it goes. Again, not really going to do anything now to anybody, but specifically the mirror folk are, of course, concerning, as I've said. Over to Kamena's turn. Eight cards in hand after the draw. Uh, can draw three more cards if they really need to. Cavern of Souls coming down as well for them. I imagine they're picking mirror folk. So what will they do? They blew the Psych Rift. Um, I don't know if to protect themselves or just to set up the board for a win or something. I'm not sure. 
Distant Melody. Choose a creature type. Draw a card for each permanent you control of that type. Oh, blue. Why you do these things? But in any other case, they're going to draw a lot more cards. I still don't know what they're looking for. They're drawing so many cards and not playing, you know, too much of any kind of real threat. So it does have me a little bit worried. Maybe the deck has a couple of keystone cards and that's it. Meryl Regery. I think I said that right. Let's see. Other Merfolk you can draw get 1-1. One, one. Whenever you cast a Merfolk spell, you may tap or untap target permanent. Things are about to get stupid. On the bright side, I don't think anything goes infinite just yet. But we do have to keep an eye out. Because Arcades can go infinite if they get Axe Guardian and enough defenders. Cryptologist, you know what it does by now. QR's follower doing the same thing it's done all game. Cryptologist still saying no to that dance. Thadel Acquisitioner. Okay. Uh, I think we maybe run one artifact in this deck and it's Expedition Map. Uh, story, again. I used to have a Felden deck and my friend had one of these decks for EDH. Uh, Hammerheim is really good at taking away land walk, uh, land walk abilities, rather. Legendary land taps for red, or you can tap to take away a land walk ability. I also didn't run Soul Ring in Felden, so I didn't get targeted too often. Kamena, they're going to draw yet another card. Carpet of Fire is coming down for Kamena. Let's take a look at that. At the beginning of each of your main phases, if you haven't added mana with this ability this turn, you may add X mana of any one color where X is the number of islands your opponents control. Well, okay then. So let's see, how many islands do we control? Uh, looks like we're controlling six islands so far. Sorry, might be five. So five free mana, Kamena drawing yet another card. 13 cards in hand for them, by the way. So far, no way to keep the hand, so they will have to discard. I will be very interested in to see to see what they're going to be discarding. Carpet of Flowers will trigger, they'll get five free mana. C4 Oracle. Whenever a Mirafuck you control deals combat damage to a player, rather, draw a card. That'll be good. Uh, they will have to start swinging at some point, though. They do get yet another Mirafuck token. They choose to untap Tropical Island. Alright. Uh, well, we see. Probably removal in the future. Kumina drawing yet another card. 13 cards in hand after that. Looks like they're going to be more or less done, but they do have green or blue mana up. They are at 30 life. Um, I'm thinking that generally they did all of that to themselves. I don't think anyone's hit them. Murpho gun tap. Over to Zer's turn. Two cards in hand for them, they're still at 40 life. They do have Zer though, and they can attack. Um, Kumana does threaten mana. We have mana to threaten with two, but we're not doing much, as you can see by our hand. So Zer attacking us, or Arcades, is probably the safest bet to get whatever they need from their deck. Prototype portal being activated, another Felwar stone going to come into play. Zer to the attack step. Let's see what's happening. Zer off into us, that's fine. We are at the highest life total and all that jazz. Zer gets the tour for something. I imagine at this point it might be a pillow fort card. So search for as Kanta came into play. To be able to keep a look at the top card library, you may put it in your graveyard. Then if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, you may transform Search for Ascanta. More importantly, we have a Cyclophon Overload coming out from the Zer player. Nice. Gore's Follower going to do some dancey things. Oh, it's untapping the island. May <laughs> Might be a counter spell coming out of Kumena. Speaking of, what did they discard? They discard Kapala, Flood Strand, Merfolk Sovereign, Void Slime. So, no counter spell there anyway. Three visits and Windswept Heath. And there's the negate. Counterspell for the win. Commander drawing a card. We cannot block. We will take one commander damage from Xur the Enchanter. Damage is good. Rolls on over to us. If we get a Psychrift, that would be kind of funny. We get trade routes. So that's good for bouncing lands, or if we have a profusion of lands, it's good for just getting rid of them to draw some other cards. Nice little uh, filtering, I guess you could say. All right, let's go ahead and play our commander. Get that down and out of the way. We should be free from counter magic, so this should be fine. We get to draw a card. Let's see what we get. We get Kalani Heart Expedition. If only we had had another green source, this would be so good right now. Unfortunately, we have to use Roiling Regrowth to go get some more green. Let's go ahead and do that. Roiling Regrowth, let's go get probably another forest at the very least, and maybe another red source. We'll sacrifice an island, so I guess we'll replace the island, forest, and an island. We have some triggers. 
gain four life, and then we get four mana to our mana pool. Again, unfortunately, we only have one green source available to us at the moment. So what do we want to do with that? Let's go ahead and play the Risen Reef. We will select red. Sure, why not? Comes into play. Let's see if we get a land into play or a card to our hand. We have a land. Let's go ahead and play it. Omnath will trigger four damage to our opponents in each Planeswalker they control. No Planeswalkers on the battlefield currently, though. And we have one mana left. Let's go ahead and use some blue. Play Trade Routes. And we'll pass it off to our opponents. Arcades goes straight through the turn. No plays at all. That is interesting. Kamina responding by drawing a card. I imagine they're going to draw a bunch of cards. Arcades leaves the game. Yeah, Psychograph can be a huge setback. Uh, it looks like they just weren't going to be drawing any lands to recast stuff. Kamina's turn. Carpet of Flowers will trigger. We still only have one island. Xur only has one island, so they'll get two free mana. Hey, a lot of mana got tapped. Let's see. Finale of Devastation for 11. Yeah, this should be fairly devastating. Simic doing Simic things. Let's see if they can actually close out the game, though. Tishana, Voice of Thunder. All right. Other than that, their creatures are going to get huge. So, yeah, this should close out the game. Oh, yeah. Zero player left. I still... That's too bad. I really wanted to know what they were doing. All right, let's bask in the glory of things. I mean, we could tap our lanes and save a couple of forests. Fish army coming in for the overkill. All right, I guess whatever works for you. We won't bother to block. Doesn't seem necessary. And we are down. Negative 134. Uh, good game to our opponents. Unfortunately, we just couldn't get mass removal to deal with the mirror folk problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at the deck and see what can be done about that. Okay, here's the deck. Uh, we do have mass removal in here. We have Flood of Tears, Blasphemous Act. We have Winds of Abandon and Cyclonic Rift. So we have four. Might need to add two more at that point. Uh, mass removal seems to be something we need a lot of the time. Unfortunately, our disruption to uh, disruption against the deck is also really good. Uh, again, I don't quite like the four-color Omnath over the three-color Omnath. I can put that Omnath into play, ping something at the very least, drop a land, it gets bigger, and if I have eight or more lands, I draw a card. And that I can do, you know, play Rolling Regrowth. I can do that, you know, drop it, Rolling Regrowth, damage, two counters, two cards. This Omnath, while it can be very powerful, you definitely need to have probably a lot of those extra landfall abilities, plus a lot of get your lands back from the graveyard abilities, plus a lot of land search. And I don't know that it's necessarily, it's maybe not necessarily better than 3-card Omnath, but that's my cup of tea. You can let me know in the comments below. More specifically to the deck, we do have the 6 blink sources, we do have the 4 mass removals. We don't, I think, have any real targeted removal. I mean, we do have stuff for enchantments and artifacts, but maybe only two or three. Most of it is focused on dropping lands and getting abilities to go off. Unfortunately, we didn't see a lot of the payoff cards this game, or any at all, really. Just uh, one Omnath, then the three color Omnath, which we didn't manage to get down. Uh, not Nesting Dragon. We didn't have Rampaging Balaths. Uh, we didn't have Avenger of Zendikar. Any of that stuff, really. So, in summary, no changes to the deck from the last game, but we might need to consider, like I said, two more mass removals. And adding white to the colors of Omnath will probably help out with that. We just kind of need to try and make them one-sided if we can. Uh, if you go with more of the animating lands route for Omnath, that can easily avoid some mass board wipes. Good game to our opponents. Uh, still wanted to see what Zer was doing. But if you saw any interest in the Zer deck or any cards you are interested in purchasing for yourself in paper, or if you need a sealed product, want a sealed product, or need sleeves to protect your stuff, please consider using the TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. Help out the channel and cost you nothing extra. Alright, so for the next game, hopefully I'll find some good mass removals that are one-sided. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. And I'll see you for the third game of Omnath Locus of Creation. Thank you for coming to Dirtle with us today. Hit that subscribe button and go ahead and hit that notification bell so you're always up to date with our latest videos. Please leave a like and share the video with somebody who you might think is interested. We also post links to our videos on Facebook and Twitter at DirtleMTG. If those are the forums you choose to use, please check this out there. 
Until we can draw with some magic again, see you around.